mist out there. Now I'm imagining there's going to be some kind of a weird monster flying in there through, uh, through that. Yeah, this is pretty much what we're looking at right now in Portland. Take that Stephen King book. Yep, Invaded by Monsters. Hello, everyone. This is Digital Trends Live. This is our daily live show here at Digital Trends where we bring you the trending tech headlines. We've got discussions. We've got interviews. So much that we bring you every day. And we are broadcasting live. We're on Periscope, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, which means we can take your comments or questions. Already a lot of comments coming in there. Uh, some interesting ones that we've seen so far, but please keep dropping those in, and we will, of course, read them because we have our Read Them and Weep segment coming up in a couple of minutes as well. Let's take a look at the docket today. So in about a uh, half hour, 25 minutes, half hour or so, we're going to be joined by Kim Wetzel, our smart home editor, to talk about a toilet cleaning robot. Yes, a toilet cleaning robot, the wave of the future, what we've always wanted not to do those projects. Well, now there's a robot that will do it. And we've got uh, Mina Basalios, who's the uh, senior R&D engineer from, Gid from uh, Alton Robotech to talk about the Goodell toilet cleaning robot. Sorry, it's a lot to get to there. Bottom line, Toilet cleaning robot. We're going to discuss that. <laughs> so we'll get that here in Key a couple of minutes. to understand yeah. toilet cleaning robot. The rest of it's just noise. Uh, we've got Lauren Proctor, head of marketing and chief of products for Jobatical, who's going to be hopping on to talk about some trends for those of you looking for jobs. In particular, if you want to, say, work internationally, Jobatical kind of specializes in that. So we're going to be talking to uh, her all about that as well. And here in studio, if you watch Friday's show, you would have noticed he was in a different studio. He flew across the country just to be here with you today. It's true. The editor in chief of Digital Trends, Mr. Jeremy Kaplan. And I'm greeted to the by my in my first trip over here to the new studios in Portland. I'm greeted to nothing but fabulous, spectacular weather. What you're used to in the <laughs> Pacific Northwest. You saw it before, a little bit of fog, a little the bit of cold, views. a little bit of gloom. Yeah, I mean, you can Great see to be probably here. two blocks. I mean, it's really, really incredible. There's some giant stilt monster that's stumbling its way through. The I just assume they're always just waiting to come out here in Portland. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere, this would be the place where that would happen. If there were stilt monsters, they yeah. would live in the hills right outside of the city. <laughs> it just makes sense. Because it's nice up there. I mean, that's where I would live. Right, yeah, I mean, it's nice houses, good real estate. Um, and <laughs> we will be talking about, <laughs> actually, Stranger Things here in a little bit as well on the show. Speaking of stilt monsters. Yes, indeed. And uh, why do we do this? The First thing I wanted to bring up, and this was uh, a bit of, I know we usually talk about the trending tech headlines, but I thought we'd do just a quick, a quick historical moment when it comes to technology today, because yesterday was the 50th anniversary of what's called the mother of all demos. And if you don't know about this, there's a lot of articles out there that you can read, just kind of catch up. But essentially, it was the debut of, well, the mouse, number one. The mouse was debuted 50 years ago in a conference that went on by the Stanford Research Institute by a gentleman by the name of Doug Engelbart. So Doug Engelbart was pretty revolutionary in what he came up with. There's a, there's a picture of him sternly talking about <laughs> things. I really want my headshot to be like that. I gotta get a, I'm gonna I make gotta that hand it. gesture all the time. Yes, right that's how. That's we're gonna have to incorporate that into the show now. Um, but Doug had a, gave a demonstration of the online system at the Fall Joint Computer Conference in San Francisco on December 9th, 1968. And so essentially what I wanted to bring up about this is just it's, it, what happened from there to where we are now is really, really incredible. And what's interesting too, so we've had mice and keyboards with us for ages and ages, and you guys yeah. know the history, right? Uh, Xerox Park licensed the technology from SRI, and then Bill Gates goes over and says, "Oh, what's this? Yeah. I think I'll use this on my I'll new take that as my well. thing here. It's called a Windows computer <laughs> um, or IBM compatible yeah. PC at the time." Anyway, we used mice and still use mice. Everyone that has a computer, although we have laptops, we don't have them here. But right, in general, you're still using this technology 50 years later. And right now, I feel like we're on the cusp of finally moving on to different. Yeah, forms of, forms of interface, right? Voice interface is big. Right. We've got haptic interfaces. We've got haptic brain interface. interfaces. There's even talk about using your eyes where you could just track it, yeah. you know, and doing something like that. But it took us half a century to finally, right. think, you know, maybe there's a better way of doing this. Yeah, and this all stems from, you know, this one research project where they, where they showed that. So I thought that was kind of cool just to, just to debut that and just kind of take a look at that, uh, the history. 50 history. years ago. 50 years. All right, there we go. We'll, we can move on from it. You can check all that out, digitaltrends.com. Let's get to our Read em and Weep segment, because I did say we do read the comments. And uh, yes, indeed, we've got some, I, I'm sure, fabulous comments today. I try not to read them beforehand, uh, but Jake here goes through all of the different uh, articles that we put up and kind of cherry picks some of the ones to take a look. Good or bad, we've got Hector Twim. Uh, regarding man claims hacker talked to him through his Nest security camera. Hundred bucks says it was the same guy that installed it. That was a that was a story we had. I think we talked about that on Friday. Yeah, we did. Yeah, um, about this guy in Arizona who claimed that somebody, uh, a hacker, hacked into his Nest camera and was talking to him. Uh, through that, 
Um, but, but it was a white hat hacker, supposedly. The guy was yeah. actually, he's doing him a favor by hacking. Right. It was, be like, hey. Hey, it's good to see you. I'm just, just helping you out a little bit. I'll be watching you when you sleep. Yeah, just, <laughs> just letting you know. It's a good I thing. Have access to your camera. Uh, so, yeah, Hector, I mean, maybe I'm going to guess the installation guy didn't go through all that process, although uh, if he did, uh, well, you know. Good. But valid guess. Yeah, valid guess. So, there we go. Hector, thank you. Uh, next comments that we have here uh, Geo Thomas talking about. <laughs> I can already read ahead here. A Vizio 5.1.4 Atmos soundbar review. Yeah, guess what? Um, Top hat, I'm sure that's what it said. Uh, <laughs> since you gave it a whopping review, it's gone up to $160. From the $98 it was, I can no longer afford it for what I wanted it for. Thanks, um, duckweed. So, <laughs> all right. So, Geo, I mean, I'm going to say that probably it wasn't the review that brought the price up necessarily. But, uh, Jeremy, since you're here, you know, I don't know if you want to address this directly. Um, Greg, I, I think you're dissembling. I would just say... You're welcome. <laughs> we did that for you. There it is, Gio. Thank you. Uh, top hat. What can we Gio. say? Sorry. Yep. All right, Gio. Moving on to the next topic. <laughs> we were discussing this before the show last week. We had a comment that YouTube commenters are basically seven to eleven year olds, and uh, yeah, I think that That's kind true. of fell right in there. Thanks, Gio. Uh, get to class. All right, Mike, um, regarding digital trends, how to stop package thieves. Cool. I've had them stolen off my route a few times this year. It's ridiculous. That is true. It's a huge thing. Uh, what are they? Porch pirates? Porch pirates. Porch yeah. pirates are a big issue, especially this time of year with everybody ordering off of Amazon and, and everywhere else and getting the deliveries. So that is a great article about how to, steps you can take. We have a different control. problem. I live in New York, of course, mm -hmm. and a lot of giant apartment buildings. And what you have is the FedEx or the UPS delivery guys, whoever it is, will drop off packages in the lobbies of these large buildings. Um, and oftentimes you will have a big stack of packages and people just open the door for some random stranger who walks in, takes them all, and leaves. Oh, dang. So they get, like, you think it's safe inside. <laughs> it's not. It's, ne it's never safe. That's kind of, oh, that's just like a gold mine. So they do just walk in and right? take off like, <laughs> all right, sweet. I'll see you later. See ya. Um, yeah, that is a problem I didn't even think about. I didn't know how you solved that one. Lobby but pirates, not porch lo pirates. Lobby pirates, porch pirates. You we've heard got, it here first. We've got solutions right there. Uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks for the comment on that. Uh, we will, uh, hopefully, that article helps you out. All right, uh, Null098, regarding awesome tech you can't buy yet. This guy looks like Jackie Earl Haley. I'm assuming you're talking about Drew, but I don't know who Jackie Earl Haley is. I have no idea either. Okay, now I'm, we're going to have to look that up. To the Googles. Yeah, to the Googles, obviously, in real time. Know? This is going to help everybody else here. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley. Oh, from... Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, okay. But, oh, Jack Washington. Okay, all right. Um, kind of? Yeah, I guess we'll have to get Drew in here. Maybe we'll do a side-by-side. -side. Maybe we need to get this actor on the show. Let's do that. We'll, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll follow up. Yes, Jackie Earl Haley on the show, and we'll see if Drew... I'm not him. making any promises. Maybe they're the Actually, same Actually, I am. Person. I am making wild, unfulfillable <laughs> promises right now. You won't have to be on here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he will and bring there you comes the comes comments. Uh, <laughs> all right, no Zero, we will take a look at that. All right, and uh, let's see. How many more do we have left here? We've got two more comments to take a look at. And again, keep dropping your comments and questions as we go through here. We do want to see those. Let us know. Michael Ward regarding Elon Musk offers free rides through his first boring company tunnel this December. This dude is not a genius. I think he's quite the opposite. We don't need his junk. He couldn't even hit a blunt. That's a lot of accusations, a lot of claims that you're making there. Um, I believe, I thought he did smoke the blunt. I think he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, so not a genius. Michael, I would, I mean, I can, you can dispute whether a lot of things about Elon Musk, but Michael, I would like to see your electric car system and your SpaceX program that you've come up with. Uh, Michael X, to maybe there's counteract a, that a little bit. There's a lot of debate about Elon about, Musk, especially after he's become such a kind of outrageous figure over the past couple of yeah. months. But I don't know. I think he's the closest thing we have to a genius these days. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's just it, I mean, my least, perspective. He really seems like an actual genius. And actually thinking outside the box, because geniuses aren't always you know, great people necessarily. They don't doesn't mean they don't make mistakes and they shouldn't stay off of Twitter sometimes. But, uh, you know, I think what he's accomplished, I think you can put him into that category, yeah. I would he think. He built rockets that you can re reuse and they land on landing pads. It's like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do want to take a ride on that tunnel thing, though. I, I want to go that. down there. So, uh, Elon, please fly us down there for that uh, live uh, digital trends live from the tunnel. Thank you. All right, next comment. We've got one more here. Uh, pass, pass BMX uh, regarding digital trends. Dubai is going to Mars and building a realistic biodome model. 
uh, somewhere new to ruin, I suppose. Although, you know, really, that's going to be a long time before I think we can ruin Mars. I think... I, what, Mars or Dubai? Because we Mars, could ruin... Oh, Dubai? We oh, could ruin Dubai. Dubai. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's just around the corner. Yeah, that could actually happen. Maybe they're doing that themselves. I yeah. can ruin that. Yeah, all right. Mars... Um, I've seen a couple of comments here I'll, I'll address before we go on to our tech headlines. Uh, Keelan just said, if Musk is the closest thing we have to a genius, we are doomed. I Aww, mean, come on. you know, geniuses, you know, Le Lex Luthor was a genius. An evil genius. Yeah, but still a genius. So I think that part can still be argued. I don't understand the arguments against Elon Musk being a genius. Yeah. Because, I mean, the things the man has done, the, the processing going on in his brain, like, yeah. he, just, he, he seems to have, on so many different levels, too. Right. I'm going to do cars. I'm going to do solar panels. I'm going to do this whole space rocket thing. Yeah. And he's got a grasp on I've got a business as well. Like, it's just a lot of stuff going yeah. on in there. Yeah, I think, I think we've settled that debate uh, right here on the show. So, yep, he's genius. All right, let's go on to our tech headlines. Um, let's get to our first one here. So this story came out. We, we were talking about this last week. On Thursday, Apple had an update to the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch 4, where it can now read. It's basically turned into a heart monitor and it can read your ECG uh, measurements, if that would be the right term to use. So this is something we knew they were going to do at some point. I don't think we quite knew exactly when they were going to drop it, but it's now out there. If you have an Apple Watch 4, you can uh, monitor your heart rate. And it supposedly will also give you updates. It'll let you know, well, I mean, not supposedly, but it is designed to do this, to let you know if there's an issue with your heart rate, um, which brings you know, a lot more in than just exercising, saying, you know, slow down. It can tell you if there's a real problem. And a real issue of, uh, of what's happening. And now there are some stories coming out, and this, I believe, I'll take a look here, but it, so this is from Apple Insider, was talking about that there's a story out about a guy who was getting an, an issue of saying that they were having, he was having an AFib issue, um, which can lead, which atrial fibrillation. Sorry, I'm not a medical doctor. As you can see, I'm struggling through the terms. I'm gonna get Elon thrown. Musk, you're not. I am not. I am not the Elon Musk of reading these stories. Uh, atrial, atrial fibrillation. So sinus rhythm or inconclusive. So what it is is saying, you've got a heart issue, get to a doctor now. That's the bottom line of what it was. And he tested it out on different arms. He thought it was maybe just an issue. And then he went into the doctor and the doctor told him, this may have actually saved your life because you legitimately have a heart issue right now. And so that kind of story, that kind of thing, I think is a really great example of what this technology can be used for. But Jeremy, I know you had some other opinions on this. I know that that guy's looking at this thing and saying, best $500 I ever spent, right? right? Yeah, exactly. The, the only point I would make here, and I'm sure this is legit and accurate, um, with all the data that's coming off of your wrist here from a, a watch like the Apple Watch, yeah. uh, and the ability of AI to actually go through and analyze it and look for heartbeat irregularities, yes, it absolutely can be useful like this. The only thing I would point out is, I feel like there's a, a bias towards reporting about this type of story. I feel like if uh, there's probably 20 or 30 people that have already gone to the hospital and have been sent home, like you're, you're looking for heart problems from your wrist, this is just a mere device. Go home, it's not important, it's meaningless. Yeah. And sheepishly, they walk back home with their tail between their legs. And then this one guy is like, oh, actually there is a, a thing here, you've been saved. We're gonna report on that, we're not gonna report about the 20 or 30 other people that made a mistake or misread the data or the doctor said there's nothing there. Um, I'm not trying to dismiss the Apple Watch technology, which I actually think is pretty revolutionary and a great leap forward for wearables. Uh, it's just that, Let's not place too much emphasis on what this actually means at this point. Like, wait till the data comes in on this. Yeah. Yeah, to, to take a look. Because that, that is a good point, especially if, if there's anybody out there that's a hypochondriac. I mean, oh, yeah. this would be the worst thing ever for them. Exactly. Have, like, oh, my God, I'm dying. Um, Leave me alone, John. Go home. I'm your doctor. <laughs> you're fine. I tell you yeah. you're fine. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely that's something to consider. I mean, I think the idea of this, if this technology does go forward, I mean, and if it, even if it saves just a tiny amount of lives or, or, or help somebody diagnose an issue, I think it's still really, really cool adaption of that technology. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what the story was about that, um, about the Apple Watch 4 potentially saving lives with the e, uh, ECG uh, uh, readings. All right, let's go on to our next topics that we have here. We've got this from Amazon. So the Amazon Go stores are slowly spreading out. And if you don't know what the Amazon Go store is, it's essentially the store you can walk in, um, an actual brick and mortar store from Amazon where there are no cashiers. You walk in, you scan your, uh, I, I think it's a UPC code, and, and you scan yourself in and uh, it just charges your Amazon Prime account. You pick up stuff and you just walk out. 
and it automatically scans it. And there's, I think, six... Which you can also do if you're a porch pirate. You just grab stuff you can and you just walk out. Yeah, you don't have to scan, though, for then. <laughs> um, so I think there's about, uh, I think, six of them that have opened up so far as they've opened them up in Chicago and San Francisco outside of Seattle. And now they are reportedly in talks about opening them up at airports. So they've had discussions with LAX and San Jose International Airport, and there's no time frame on this. This is just reports that they've been having these discussions. But I think that is an absolutely great use of that technology. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, flying, you wait in a lot of lines for flying anyway. Waiting in line to get some food or waiting in line to get whatever, a magazine or something, um, I hate it. I hate waiting in lines at the airport. And especially there's this whole road rage mentality that goes on in yes. airports. So let's call it air rage. <laughs> you're waiting in line for the guy to take his shoes off and put the things in the conveyor belt, and you're just getting more and more frustrated, right? Yeah. And that, that mentality parades as you're walking through the airport behind a sluggish family or the foreigner that yep. doesn't know where he's going. And then you have to wait in line to buy the apple and the bottle of water, and you're going, just let me get through this thing to go. I'm not going to yes. murder anybody. Yes. If you can just grab something, scan a key, and go... Absolutely. I am in. So I would hope they do that. I mean, the other part, too, to this story is that Bloomberg's also reporting that, uh, and that we've talked about this before here on the show, but they may open as many as 3,000 Amazon Go stores by 2021. That's what Jeff Bezos said he wanted to do. He also said five years ago they were going to have drone delivery by right now, yep. which I haven't seen that, so I don't nope. know if we can trust him. All right. That said, we're him. all going to be buying everything from Amazon at some point soon. They're going to own everything. He is the yeah. overlord. Yep, it is. See, so if you're looking for the evil genius... There's the evil genius. Maybe one on. All right, that's the story on that. Amazon you heard it here stores. first. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I gotta keep gotta keep up with that. <laughs> um, let's get to this report, and I thought this was pretty interesting, just because we all I don't care who you are, we've all dealt with this at some point, and that is spam phone calls. Whether it's the IRS, you know, saying that oh you owe back taxes, pay right now, or we're gonna come arrest you. Um, I have one where they called and they said, this is the police, and you are under you are under suspicion for a crime. You need to call us immediately, or we're going to come arrest you. I'm like, All right. <laughs> go, go for okay. it. Yeah, I want to know what it was. Um, and this is a, a report. It's a study that came out uh, from a company called First Orion who provides uh, caller ID and call blocking services to major cell companies. So they have access to a lot of data. And the report is this, that the number of fraudulent calls in 2018 has gone to up to 30% of all calls oh. made. 30%. That's up from 4% in early 2017. So it's gone up 26% in one year, 30% of calls. And this is after examining 50 billion mobile phone calls. That's a, that's a pretty good data sample size. And 30% are spam calls. Which is just horrifying. I mean, we, Absolutely. we've all stopped placing phone calls as frequently as we used to, which yeah. is fine. Move on to texting. It's easier, right. it's faster, it's more efficient. And all the phone calls that you and I don't place have been replaced by some jackhole placing yep. fake phone calls. I get them that at my desk. Appropriate, that's a technical term that's a technical that can term. be used on this show. I get them at my desk, on my landline. Uh, they're Chinese phone calls. I don't even speak Chinese. Yeah. I pick up the phone and somebody's ranting at me in Chinese. Yeah. It's maddening. It is completely maddening. And another thing that's happening right now, the big trend is spoofing numbers. Yep. So they'll... You know, if you ever notice some of the spam calls, it'd be like, oh, it's my local area code. Like, ours is 503. I'm like, okay, well, I doubt that's a spammer. I'll answer the phone, and then boom, it's a spammer. But since they're spoofing that, they're taking other people's numbers, and they're masking it to make it look like that. And this happened to me last week. My number was taken and used as a spoof number. So this spammer was calling, and it was showing up as being my personal phone number. Oh. And some people decided to call that number back to complain about the... Uh, spam calls they were receiving. So I got some really nice messages. Uh, <laughs> Jim left me a very nice message talking about how he's going to send me to the Better Business Bureau. And um, I had to explain, I'm like, it's, that's not me. I'm sorry you got the spam call, but I didn't, I didn't call it. I'm not offering you the Marriott gift cards or whatever it was that he thought he was getting. The part, the part about this that bothers me the most, if you're watching this show, you're probably a little savvier than most when it comes to technology. And you probably get the same calls that I get from my mom saying, Jeremy, I keep getting these calls. What can you do about it? And there's nothing that right we can now, do about it. There is literally nothing that can be done. You can report the number, although now if they're spoofing the numbers, you're probably just reporting somebody like me, so I don't know how many I got. Um, and so, I mean, it, it is. It's a real, real issue. There are some industry consortiums working on some solutions which are literally out of our hands. It's up to the T-Mobiles and the Verizons and the FCCs of the world. Yeah. And they move at... Uh, 
a very fast pace. Oh. I'm sure you've noticed how rapidly they can address issues when they rise up. So Absolutely. I'm sure we'll have a solution in maybe by the end of the day. Oh, yeah, easily. So you just uh, send us a message when you have that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge, huge concern. And I think, uh, actually, I was talking to some people here at Digital Trends. I think they're working on an article on this, just covering how vast this is. Because I don't think anybody realized how many phone calls there are. 30% of all calls, according to this study, are spam calls. And uh, I'm noticing here, yeah, Kilin just said, I just refuse to answer any call that is unrecognized. And I tend to do that too until they start leaving me messages complaining about my Marriott phone calls that I've been allegedly making. Um, it was also, people do fall for it. That was one other part that I wanted to bring up on this. So in tracking this, they found that people who fell for the frauds lost an average of $700 each last year for a total loss of $332 million. Which is why these calls exist. It works. Yep. You know, if they place 10,000 phone calls and two of them pay off. Boom. Great. Yeah, 10,000 phone calls, they get 1,400 bucks. I mean, it's just uh, the robots calling it. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's nuts. Uh, even in July, there was 20 people working at a call centers in India who were sentenced in a large scheme that billed more than 15,000 Americans of hundreds of millions of dollars over a four-year period. I blame Steve Jobs for coming up with the whole iPhone thing mm -hmm. and uh, Sony Good Ericsson idea. just because I don't like them. Okay, boom. Well, solve that one. So answer, answer yourself, uh, Apple. All right, final thing that we want to get to here um, is this Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Season three. I am giddy with excitement. It was supposed to be out in October this last year, and they delayed it. So we are going to get it this year, they're claiming. But we finally got a teaser trailer for it. And it's essentially just saying what the names of, the, of some of the episodes are going to be. So it's episode titles. And we've got uh, Susie, Do You Copy? We've got The Mall Rats. We've got The Case of the Missing Lifeguard. Um, and then some other ones that we can show here, too. So... What do you think, Jeff? It really puts the tease in teaser trailer. They didn't actually show us anything new. The names of the episodes, I mean, we could speculate, but there's yeah. not a lot in there for you to speculate with. There's going to be a, a stuff that happens at the mall, obviously. <laughs> we, we were debating earlier, we think there's probably going to be maybe, perhaps an arcade scene. I would think an arcade scene, and they did do something else. Um, uh, this was a while back. They filmed a fake uh, promotion, like a fake advertisement for the mall. So the, there is the actual mall. Yeah, I didn't see that. And I, I had missed that too, um, called Starcourt Mall. And so there's a there's a fake advertisement that they put out, just like a hey, come to Starcourt Mall and hang out you know, <laughs> with all the '80s style. So get yourself an Orange Julius. Yeah, exactly. Play yeah. a little Star Wars. Yeah, grab a Cinnabon. Um or Space Invaders, not Star Wars. Oh yeah, Space. Well, no, there was a Star Wars game back then too. Was there? I think feel like I don't know. Blast These are the debates that we go through here. Um, but yeah, so Stranger Things season three teaser 2019 is when we're gonna get it. Which also means this is a great time for you to go binge watch on the first two seasons, which were so fantastic. Yes. I'm going to have to just watch the stuff. second one again just to refresh everything that happened on that. The only thing I'd say is, so you probably think the same thing that I'm thinking. S season two was great, but also kind of retread season one just a yeah. little bit. So I'm hoping that the delay is to make sure that this show, is the new season, is different enough and builds off the characters and expands a little bit more. Right. We have this new venue, so that's going to be great. That should help out a little bit. Yep. So that is it, Stranger Things we'll Season 3. We shall see what happens. Well, I know we need to go to break because we have our special guest who's going to be joining us here in just a second, Mina from Alton Robotics, to talk about the Goodell toilet cleaning robot. And we've got Kim Wetzel also hopping in here to discuss that. Jeremy, thank you for hopping in here, from traveling you know, all the way across the coast to be in the New York studio and then here just for this segment. Uh, flew in. I also have to go outside and battle the stilt monsters. Oh, so. yeah, the st that's right. Oh, the mist is still coming in. Oh, so yeah. This, uh, this could be our last refuge right here. Yeah, yeah. The universes are going to collide. This isn't going to end overnight. Right. So. Yep. We'll yep. probably be back tomorrow to talk more about that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So we can never leave here because of the stilt monsters. All right. Let's take a break. We're going to just take a quick you know, minute, two-minute break here. We'll play some videos. And then we're going to come back and talk to me now about this toilet cleaning robot. <laughs> we're going to be doing that right here on Digital Trends Live.
Hello, back with more Digital Trends Live. And of course, as I said, we are live, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitch, in addition to videos on demand afterwards. So drop your comments and questions right in there. And I'm joined now by Kim Wetzel, our Smart Home Editor. Hello, Kim. Hi, how are you? Doing well, thank you for hopping in here today. And we're gonna be bringing on our special guest, and this is about an article that we have up at Digital Trends that's taken off. It's kind of like the use of tech that we probably have always wanted. Yes. I've never thought about. Yes. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do you like cleaning your toilet, Craig? No. Yeah. No, I do not. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this is what this technology is about. And uh, let's bring on the expert right now. We've got Mina from Alton Robotics. And Mina, I'm gonna see, I'm just going to say right now, I didn't want to mess up your last name. I was wondering if you could pronounce it for me really quick. Okay. It's Vesalius. Vesalius. I was going to say it right. Dang it. I should have <laughs> I should have taken the risk. Uh, well, anyway, Mina, senior uh, designer there at uh, Alton Robotics, let's talk about this product, this toilet scrubbing robot that you guys created. <laughs> yeah, well, sim simply put, it is the world's first portable toilet cleaning robot. Um, it operates on a simple plug and play. So you just take it from a station, plug it into your toilet, hit play. Um, it's portable, so you can take it to all the toilets in your home. You really only need to buy one. Battery lasts for about 30 cycles, so you can clean once a day, charge it once a month. And um, let me just plug in the, pro, uh, the robot right now. Uh, I'll say it's available now on Newegg and Amazon for $4.99. For $4.99. Uh, yeah, and we've tested it for about uh, 500 cycles, so that works out to being about a, a, a buck a clean. Wow, I'm um, I'm really excited to test this product out. I mean, I, I think we have one coming to the office. I think I've been working with your people on that. But uh, tell me, does it actually like do everything? Like, does it get the rim and all of that stuff, or like, how where well, it, does it clean? So it, uh, it it cleans the top of the rim. There's the example. The inner surface of the rim and the underside of the rim cleans the bowl down to the exit. Um, so right now it doesn't clean the outside of the toilet or the tank or the toilet seat uh, or anything like that, but it's basically just, uh, it's, an, it's a robotic toilet brush. Um, so anything that you would normally clean with a toilet brush, it's just automated. Okay, I wanna, I wanna go into some more of the specifics on how it works, but maybe for the evolution of this, whose idea was this to begin with? Was <laughs> 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 well, it's a, I'll, I'll say it's a group effort. Um, it, it essentially, it goes to the company focus, and, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but our company motto is family matters. So basically, the company we, as a company, we want to go and take over the jobs in the home that people don't want to do, just so we can give people uh, a little bit more free time so that they can spend it with loved ones or on self-improvement. Um, we just want to take all the tedium uh, out, of, out of the home. And what's more tedious than cleaning the toilet, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's absolutely something that I want. I, I have a use for this already. Um, so, so you kind of came up with this concept of it, and then what is it, where did it go from there? In, in you know, you have the concept like you're probably thinking of different things. Like, okay, I don't want to do this at home. I'm sure somebody like like, well, this sucked. I just had to do this over the weekend. Um, <laughs> then, how do you go to designing a toilet scrubbing robot? Uh, it's uh, it's painstaking work. Basically, you have to. You come up with a mechanical concept, you check feasibility to make sure that your what you've put on paper actually works in reality. You source the components and then you just test it and iterate and test it and iterate until you get a product that looks good, functions well, and is durable. Now there's, um, and Kim, I'm sure you have some questions for him as well, but I, I am seeing one question that this, this has come up a few times and mm -hmm. I feel like we have to ask since you are on here, Who's, who cleans the robot? <laughs> who cleans the robot? Well, the, the way that the robot is designed is, so first off, the, the plastic is antimicrobial. Okay. So it, it, won't, it shouldn't get dirty. And furthermore, we've actually made it so that it doesn't get dirty. Kind of like who cleans your toilet brush? You, you don't typically do that. Um, so in the same way, it doesn't get dirty. Another question that people always has for us, uh, have for us is, why doesn't the brush spin? And it, it goes back to cleaning the robot. We make it so that it doesn't splash, um, and you can't do that with a spinning brush. That, that way, the robot itself won't get dirty. It's not something that you typically have to do. Okay. 
So if it doesn't spin, what like does it just kind of rotate like slowly, or how does it move? Yeah, it it works in the same way as you would operate a brush. It takes okay. the brush, forces into place, and then rotates around, scrubbing. Um, it's it's akin to how a human being would clean the toilet with a toilet brush, and not akin to how um, you would clean it. Let's say if you had a brush on a drill. Um, okay. You can imagine that would get very messy if you put a brush on on a drill and put it in the toilet. It'd be a big um, sloppy mess. Yeah. yeah, it'll it'll make a mess. It'll it'll dirty the robot. It'll dirty the you know um, everything around the robot. So we we wanted to make it as splash free as possible. And you know, it, back to your first question, how often do you clean your toilet brush? Just uh, it's not something right. that you your toilet brush handle, I should say. It's it's not something that you typically have to do. So how long does it take? Um, how long does it take to finish one toilet? Uh, the cycle that we have in it right now is about five minutes long. Oh. Um, so it does Speed. a pretty, it, it, yeah, it does a pretty thorough job in, in the five minutes. You can obviously run it multiple times if you wanted, but we, we find that um, typically five, five minutes is a good cycle time uh, to clean everything. We've had all of this independently tested by uh, a testing facility, uh, SGS, um, if, you're, if you know who they are. And we've also done our own independent tests where we uh, basically just really messed up a toilet with the uh, dirt and black charcoal left it overnight. Um, and, and we found that just a couple of cycles with something, you know, it was basically we took a white toilet and turned it black and just uh, three cycles was enough to get more than 95% of uh, the coverage on that. So the five minute cycle is great. If you have something that's incredibly disgusting, you might have to do it three times, but by that point, it's just maintenance. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you want the robot doing that if you have to clean that three times. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> you don't want to be involved in that. Um, all right, well, so so this one, and again, this is the um, Goodell, uh, Goodell robot, correct? I want to make sure yes. I get the name correct. Yeah, that's right. Goodell, okay. And so you have this one out there, and it's available now at those two different places you were talking about. Do you have plans for the evolution of this? Because right now you're looking at maybe a home home uses for this. Um, I don't know about commercial applications. Like where, where do we, where do you take this from here? Um, well, we typically, as a company, we're not looking into going commercial. Gotcha. We want to focus on the home. Um, we had some concepts uh, thrown around that were commercial um, for this, for the toilet cleaning, but it's not, it's not really where we want to go. We have other robots coming down the pipeline um, but not, not in toilet cleaning. And I, and I don't want to get into too much detail about what we have coming down the pipeline, okay. although I'm very excited about it, but our patents haven't cleared yet. So, um, gotcha. I can't really talk too much. Okay. Are there other, when you were pitching this idea, were there other tasks at home? And I don't know if you can answer this either. You feel free to say no. Other tasks that you have thought of that, Ooh, we should get a robot to do this, or we should get a robot to do this that are down the huh. line. Anything you can mention? We have a laundry list. We have a laundry list. Um, really, it's and it's not just cleaning. It's it, it's a whole bunch of other home tasks that I don't want to get into all the specifics. But, okay. You, you know, we as a society, we go to work and then we come home and then we have to do housework, which which is not right. And we want to make it so that people can go home and put their feet up. I can think of a lot of things that I would love a robot to clean in my home. Yeah, you've got you've got some kids at home. Is there any specific thing you could think of for an application? Well, I have a front load washing machine, and you know that gasket that goes around it always gets all mucked up. Oh yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, Mina, I'm wondering, does this come with an app or anything, or is there like how does it work in terms of how do you know when it's finished? It beeps. Uh, it beeps. It's, we okay. wanted to make it as simple as possible. It's it's literally just plug and play. Okay. You plug it into the toilet. You press the button. You walk away. And then when it's done, it just um, it it basically goes home. And then you can unplug it, put it in its docking station, or take it to your next toilet. And just so you can take it to your next toilet, it does a little shake off at the end, just like you would shake off a, a toilet brush. Um, and it gets all the water off of it. That way, you're not dripping from the next toilet uh, from this toilet to the next. Nice. If you want to go there. All right. Well, we've got the full review to, or well, the article up. The article. We're get, yeah, we're getting the product. We are, yes. For the full review. Um, they're at the site for Goodell, for the Goodell robot. And, uh, Mina, thanks for hopping on, too. So, uh, again, just to uh, follow up, you know, where's the best place for people to pick up this product? 
Uh, well, you can get it off our site. You can get it new egg. You can get it Amazon. But honestly, Amazon will probably get you the fastest shipping. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, fantastic. Amina, thanks so much for, for hopping on here for uh, Digital Trends Live. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Kim, just to follow up with you, so this this is a pretty interesting product. Like, <laughs> it is really interesting. I mean, I will say it, it does cost four hundred ninety nine dollars, so it is a little pricey. But um, this could be the, this could be where we're going, right? Yeah. With um, with home cleaning. Because and that's robots. something I wanted to ask the live audience too. Like, what would you want a robot to do at home? Because certainly, I want that. Although I want the full bathroom cleaning robot. That would be when awesome. It, yeah, just does the entire just, thing. God, sprays maybe. the whole thing down yeah. and then wipes it all Just up. Just spray it all in bleach and then wipe it off. That's <laughs> fine with me. Um, but I'm sure you see a lot of this, you know, just in the smart home section. Just like, are you seeing more and more? I know, obviously, we have the, like the smart home hubs is a huge thing, but more robotics being applied. Um, I think the biggest thing I'm seeing now is the robot vacuums. Okay. Um, and there are a few robot mops as well. And there are a couple that are even hybrids. Those are kind of the biggest things in like robot we're seeing right now. I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, a mopping one as well. That yes. would be actually, no, that's another really nice innovation. I want that too. Absolutely. Um, what about like for CES, looking forward here to CES, like anything that you're anticipating when it comes to the robotic side of the smart homes? Um, I, I have, I have, I have not seen much. Yeah. Um, I think that. And it's hard to, I know it's kind of hard to guess on some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's hard to guess. We're still kind of, you know, gathering intel on what we might be seeing for the smart home. But I think for robots, it's, we're still a little ways away from, you know, seeing the home robot going and getting your laundry for you and right. taking it down and putting it into yeah. the laundry. Robot, the do my machine, laundry. Yeah. Which would be sweet. Oh, it'd be awesome. Would robot, be so bring cool. me a beer. Right? Um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I want. I want the full on, like, yeah, I want the full-on house cleaning assistant. Yeah, yeah, that does all that stuff that I don't want to. That would be so awesome. How many years till we get this? This is what I we need. I don't know. We're a long ways from the Jetsons. This is we're what getting it, things piecemeal, but there we're a long ways from it. I feel like we were talking about Elon Musk earlier. I mean, maybe this is what he should be focusing his time on. Forget about the tunnel. Get me the house cleaning robot. Yeah. That brings me a beer. I think that's a great plan. I think it is. So there, we've solved all of these tech issues. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I know uh, any any last thing that you want to talk about, just with the smart home section in general, that you want to direct people toward um, uh, to your section? You know, just keep, keep an eye on the smart home section. We're getting a lot of um, CES information coming out. Um, some of it's not, you know, not going to be, a, you know, actually available till January, but some of it's coming out. There's lots of exciting products in home security, sleep tech, all that stuff. So nice. just keep an eye on our section and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll let you know what's up. Fantastic. Well, there it is. So Kim Wetzel and Kim, where can people follow you on Twitter? At Kim Dog. Yes. <laughs> At Kim Dog. Follow Kim uh, and follow the site and follow her section for all of that exciting stuff. Kim, thanks so much for having on here. Yeah, thanks you. for having me. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Digital Trends Live. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be joined by Lauren to discuss uh, Jabatical and everything that they're doing and some different trends when it comes to uh, finding jobs, different trends that we might see for 2019. And this really applies to all of us. So excited to talk to her, and we'll do that here after just a little bit of a break. We'll play a couple of videos here. We'll get everything lined up, and we'll be back here in a second with more Digital Trends Live.
Continuing on with Digital Trends Live, welcome back. And we are live. We're broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitch, which means we can take your comments. I just want to remind everybody of that, so keep dropping those in there. We're joined now by Lauren Proctor, who is the Head of Marketing and Chief of Products for Jabatical. Hello, Lauren, thank you so much for hopping on here today. Thank you for having me. Um, Lauren, I wanna, I, I've got some specific questions we wanna get to. We wanna talk about some trends maybe for 2019, just when it comes to our jobs, but why don't we walk everybody through what it is that uh, you do there with Jabatical and what the company is. Yeah, so Jabatical is a company that matches international tech workers with companies who wanna hire them all over the world. That's pretty, that's pretty great. I'm sure for a lot of our audience in particular, this, uh, this is something that I'm sure they'll want to check out. So, um, so you have the different companies will be looking for jobs, but in specifically this international side of it, I find that really interesting. So who is maybe your, your target market for these? Yeah, so actually there's a skilled shortage in tech almost everywhere right now. And we have... Uh, tech workers from every country around the world. We just got a sign up from North Korea and wow. we have employers from 76 countries. So these are employers who really want to, you know, build diverse teams and benefit from global expertise around the world. I think that's that's really impressive too. And it says a lot, I think, about where we're at right now too with technology, like the, this idea of oh no, I'm just going to go to Silicon Valley. Like that's where everybody goes for working tech. You know, I mean, clearly that's not true, but this helps connect people for all of that. So that's, uh, that's really, really, um, really a great idea for that. And how long has Jabatical been around? So Jabatical had just celebrated our fourth birthday. So brand, so yeah, pretty, pretty new company. And how many people are using it right now? We have 275,000 people now around the world who have raised their hands and said, you know, that they really would like to take a job abroad, which it's growing more and more. We're getting about 3,000 signups a week, and uh, we're ma we've matched people from um, 34 countries to 54 other countries. So wow. definitely bringing people to different startup hubs around the world. Absolutely. Well, and, and with that, with, you know, probably the kind of information that you're getting working with that many employers, that many countries, that many people seeking jobs, you probably get a pretty good idea of what the trends are when it comes to employment. I think that's one of the things we wanted to bring up is maybe for 2019, um, what some of the trends are you see for uh, going forward? Absolutely. So we're seeing more and more remote work. And right now it's people who have gone remote. They want to stay remote with their careers. They want flexibility. They want better. Uh -oh. And more than anything, we're seeing tons of people from big, uh, big startup hubs, San Francisco, New York. They're throwing away their salaries in return for, you know, real personal career, personal growth and career growth. And they care about working on a company with a mission. That's, you know, and I, I feel like that is definitely a trend as far as that. I mean, you've seen different news stories about employees disputing things, you know, if the company goes in a certain direction. I know Google's had a whole bunch of things going on with that. So, so company mission seems to be, is, is that, if, correct me if I'm wrong, the company mission seems to be a very big thing that people are looking for when they're looking for jobs. Absolutely. It's more important than ever. And I think that, you know, as we get these tech people, they, in all of us, I think we're getting lots of recruiting messages inundated. And so it's for people to choose not only what they want to do, but who they want to work with and where they want to go. Um, what are some other things that you're taking a look at that seeing going forward that, that people who are watching this show can anticipate or just to have a good idea about for 2019? Yeah, so we're seeing a ton of employers are trying to figure out what to do with AI, machine learning, and uh, we're seeing actually governments are supporting this as well. So we're working with some governments actually to change visa laws so that they can, so that people can bring in or companies can bring in these high profile workers. And, you know, they really want people who are diverse, who are ready to take on a new challenge and who can have the, both the soft skills and are willing to take on you know, new, new jobs, learn new technologies because things are changing faster than ever. 
I think that's interesting, yeah, working with the governments to ease the, you know, visa restrictions and things like that. I mean, the, the guy from North Korea, I don't know how hard a time he's going to have. Uh, but, but that's still the, just the, the idea of making that a simpler process of transferring over there. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. I know there's something, a concept, the digital nomad that, uh, that I was reading about. Is that, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we're actually working with the Estonian government on a digital nomad visa that allows people up to 365 days access to the Schengen area, which is Europe, Iceland, um, it's 26 countries, I believe now, where you can sign up if you're a high profile digital, no digital nomad, then you can travel literally anywhere without having to worry about visa restrictions or where you're going. And, you know, we're really seeing these borders dropping for tech workers because it's more important than ever to get tech to build an economy. So we're really excited about this. Estonia is thinking of, that they will launch it in the next. Oh, we have a little bit of a freeze. And also have some more governments that we're working. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Nope. I mean, of me course. Now? Oh, yeah. Yep. I can hear you now. Yeah. Sorry. Of course, we're talking oh. about tech and uh, you know telecommunication that's exactly when we have this happen you know it's, of course right it's live television um so yeah but the, just that idea of you know for tech workers especially right now they have a lot of opportunities and i think you're right when you bring up that you know governments are looking more at it because yeah tech is the future you brought up ai all of that those things and you still need skilled employees to help implement a lot of that stuff and be able to work on that and this sounds like it's a great place uh, to go there. And what, one other thing that I wanted to bring up here too, because I know we're starting to run out of time, was this idea of a shortened work week. And that was something that I noticed in what the, the trends that you were talking about for 2019 are. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So we're seeing more and more employer performance-based model where they are worried more about what people achieve during the work week as opposed to how often they need to be there. So it's not counting hours and giving promotions to the guy who shows up at eight and goes to bed or leaves at you know, midnight. We're talking about you know, performance-based um, rewards and also yeah. it doesn't matter where you are when you're there. I love that idea because I think that's probably I mean, that, you know, that old model of, yeah, you need to be there at the office for 16 hours in order to, you know, get ahead. And th that's not always the case. That's not always the right way to look at it. And just value of life and keep people from getting burnt out. You know, that is uh, definitely something that's, that's an interesting concept. And if it sounds like maybe we'll see more of that in 2019. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, too, for hopping on here today to discuss this. And again, Jabatical, so um, just go to jabatical.com. Is that the best way for people to sign up? What's the, what's the step a person watching this show should do to get involved? Yeah, just go to jabatical.com, create a profile. The more we know about the employee, then the, more we, the better we can match them to wherever they want to go. Nice. Well, Lauren, thanks so much for hopping on. So jabatical.com sounds like some really interesting things. And sign up there if you're looking to, if you're a tech worker looking to get abroad. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. You too. All right, there we go. That was Lauren Proctor from jabatical.com here talking about their company. And today on Digital Trends Live, we've covered, covered a wide range of things, as we always do. But starting off with our tech headlines, we mentioned that 50 years ago today was the mother of all demos, where basically the mouse was debuted. You can check out that. We had Jeremy Kaplan in here, our editor-in-chief, to go through the tech headlines news. And we, we covered a bunch of different things, actually. We talked about Amazon Go stores, maybe being in airports, um, the Apple ECG uh, update for the Apple Watch 4 and what that's done, um, and uh, Stranger Things Season 3. We got a teaser trailer for that. Then we had Kim Wetzel in here with Mina from, uh, from Atlan Robotics. I want to make sure that I get the name right. But it basically, it's the Goodell toilet scrubbing robot. We had him in here to talk about that and what kind of things they went through to create that robot. We've got an entire article of that at digitaltrends.com that you can take a look at, just like everything else we've discussed today. And then Lauren Proctor from jabatical.com to talk about that. Every day of the week, we have new guests, we have new headlines, we have new stories, discussions that we want to bring you. And we love bringing them to you live, but we also love it when you watch them afterward as well. So hit subscribe 
wherever you are finding digital trends, whether it's on YouTube or Twitch or going to our website, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you stay up to date and follow along all day long at Digital Trends with all of the different stories and things that we bring you. And uh, lots coming up this week. I know tomorrow we're going to go to our New York studio for a segment with Les Shu and Julian Tokachu, and they're going to kind of cover some of their favorite smartphones from this last year. So they're going to hit the highlights of the smartphones. You want to tune in for that. That's going to be tomorrow here for our show, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Make sure you tune in every day. We'll be back there tomorrow with another episode of Digital Trends Live.